text fields are very common in web applications, especially in business applications. So let's have a look at some of the methods that are available in the text field class of Vadin. Alright, so let's start by creating a new text field. And let's add it to this um, vertical layout that's part of the main view. Um, so there's the text field, nothing fancy yet. And the first method we want to explore, maybe it's the set label, right? You should be uh, familiar with this, so you can tell the the user what exactly this text field is all about. So you have to introduce a name there. Now another way to kind of tell the user what to to introduce there is to use the set placeholder uh, method. For example, enter your name, and it's going to be visualized inside the text field. And so when I start typing something, then uh, it disappears. Um, you don't have to use both. Sometimes it's uh, enough to use just uh, one of them. Um, I just want you uh, to know that uh, these are options that you have available and you should uh, consider whether to use one or another or both at the same time. So um, another way to kind of uh, help a little bit more the user on what exactly it's supposed to be there in that text field is to use a set helper text. For example, uh, use your full name. So now th this uh, text is going to appear uh, below the text field, right here. And another way to uh, kind of uh, provide help to on how to use this uh, text field is to add uh, a, a tooltip. Tool Unfortunately, there is no set tooltip method, so you have to do it with the um, uh, element API, get element set attribute, I think it's title example John Doe now if I place the mouse here you'll see the tooltip right there okay so you have one two three four four ways to kind of instruct visually the user on uh, what the text field is all about and what's the value that it's uh, going to be there um, how about um, the kind of uh, like the behavior, how can we help the user to introduce data faster, that's critical in business applications. So let's explore some of the, the methods. So the first one that maybe you are also very familiar with is the focus um, method, which uh, when I reload the page, it places automatically the cursor there, so I can start typing something here. Now there's uh, another method which is uh, set out of focus. And it's gonna do the focus when the page loads. So you can see this uh, blue uh, border around it. it kind of works uh, like um, the same almost, All right? Good. So what if uh, what if we had, for example, a a value? So let's say let's set a value here. It maybe comes from the database or whatever. Let's put it here. Then I'm I'm here. I go to this page, and I want to edit this, so I have to remove this, and then uh, edit. Right. So I have to go ahead and remove. How can we help the user not to do that? So um, there is a method called set auto select, and what that's gonna do is uh, when it when the page uh, refreshes, it selects all the text inside it so I don't have to um, kind of uh, remove the text but I can just type the new value that's pretty handy as well all right um, what else can we do here um, what if we want to remove the value but we are editing something else so we'll have to let's say there are more fields here we have to go here and then click and remove right so two interactions, uh, we can uh, make it simpler by just making kind of uh, or uh, mm, enabling, or showing the clear button that appears inside the text field. So again, when I'm editing something else, I can just come here and remove the value. Another um, way of uh, 
kind of helping the user enter data. All right, so there, there you have some interesting methods for that. And uh, then finally, how about methods for um, validation to make sure that the uh, the user enters the, the correct data and how can we uh, help our users to enter the correct data in the correct format. So the first one is maybe uh, something you already know, which is set required. And what this does is it shows when there is no value here, it shows this little dot indicating that there uh, th that this field is um, uh, required and you can use it later or at the beginning of the form say like all fields marked by this dot are required so they know before they start entering um, the data right so that's one one way to to do that to, to help the user identify those 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 uh, fields now we can set for example a set uh, we can set a minimum length for, for this uh, name. Let's say it's two characters and the same uh, for a max length. Let's say it's 10 characters. So now when I'm trying to enter only one character, it can show that there is an error, right? The color changes to this red or pink color in the background. Now if I enter Two characters it's all right and if I enter three four five six seven eight nine ten and then I try to enter more it doesn't let me enter more characters because that's the max length that we configured all right so how about a pattern we can add a pattern to so, uh, the set pattern method accepts our regular expression so for example if we have uh, let's say we want to accept uh, letters and um, probably uh, space one or more times. So you can use any kind of uh, um, regular expression here to validate. So this one is valid, but if I use letters and numbers, it becomes invalid. Now if I remove the numbers, it is valid and it should let me introduce also spaces all right oh uh, now how can the user know what's wrong with the with the value when we have numbers here for example okay it's wrong but uh, but please tell me what is wrong with it so we can set an error message um, we can say letters only uh, what else what was min to the characters right this is an example so again when I come here and try to type something invalid it's going to show this and as soon as I introduce a valid uh, value then the, uh, the error message disappears and the way to kind of use this uh, in the, in the um, on the server side for example if we add a value change listener that takes an event and here we can just ask that text field if it's valid or not so if it's uh, sorry if it's invalid or not so if it is invalid let's for example show a notification invalid name else we can call if we have a service we don't have it here but just showing you so you get the idea we can do your thing with the value in the text field right we don't have that so I'm going to uh, comment that out but it's, that's um, that's how you do it mm. so when the, um, the user introduces something that it's wrong then uh, you'll get this notification as well or you can add some kind of uh, text somewhere a little bit more visible or you can uh, do any other kind of uh, way to instruct the, the user to go ahead and fix the errors that probably you are showing like this let me know if you have any questions about this topic or if you have suggestions on what to cover in future videos thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video